Welcome back to Beyond the Headline, everyone. It's a very exciting day to be here because I'm here with someone who's right here in San Diego with me, Adam Moyer, the founder of Knockaround. Adam, thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. So we typically start out with, you know, a description of the company, but we have to start out with the announcement that you're making tomorrow about Knockaround sunglasses at a special assembly. Can you introduce us in that light? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Knockaround is a sunglasses company and we're based here in San Diego, but one of the projects that we've been working on recently and that I'm excited about um, is uh, our class acts program. So we go into local uh, elementary schools, fourth and fifth grader students that we work with, and we have them come up with sunglasses designs. And uh, this year I think we had 500 designs from fourth and fifth graders and we picked one winner. And those sunglasses that we select we actually make the sunglasses, sell the sunglasses, and all the money that we make goes back into those elementary schools for our program. So tomorrow, uh, 9.30 a.m., I'm going to be in front of like hundreds of hundreds of elementary school kids announcing the winner of our program, and the winner is, is pretty awesome this year. Can we see it? Yeah. Really. So this is Jaden at Madison Elementary and uh, his the winning design he called them after the storm so on the front you've got like this sort of gray cloudy uh, start to the sunglasses and then you've got some cloudy skies on the lenses and then as you open up the arms a rainbow so after the storm he says I did this because I love rainbows and I thought it would be cool Which, he's right it's cool and it's cool. So he doesn't even know yet. I mean, and we haven't even announced it on uh, on our website yet. So he's going to be stoked. Tomorrow. You and I were just discussing, you know, the motivation for you with creating Class X, and it really lends to your founding story. You know, you've been running Knockaround now for over ten years, but you've never even taken a business class. Introduce us, you know, to the founding story and how this all came about for you. Yeah, I've always. Even when I was a little kid, I've always been interested in business. I mean, I, I remember trying to start little side businesses when I was in middle school and high school, and none of them really took off. Um, but then when I went to went to college uh, at the University of Virginia, um, I got into art. I started taking all these art classes, and I loved it. And I, I never really saw myself as an art major, but I loved it so much that I, I majored in art at the University of Virginia. And then I thought... How can I just be an artist? You know, like how can I make this my career? Um, so I wanted to kind of keep that art train rolling, and uh, that's what brought me to San Diego, where Knockaround is now. So I uh, finished at University of Virginia, and I um, got into uh, UC San Diego, University of California, San Diego, um, in their graduate art program, and. Came out to San Diego and I was all geared up to, to you know get into this graduate art program, and I had this idea to start a sunglasses company. And I don't really remember like the exact moment that I had the idea. It's kind of a you know, there's never that one light bulb moment like you see in a cartoon or something. But um, I had this idea that I wanted to start a sunglasses company, and I I had some time. I moved out to San Diego in the summer. Classes didn't start until September. So I had a couple months of time to kill, you know, and uh, I, I did it. I just, I, I came up with a name, I came up with a very basic logo, and I ordered some cheap sunglasses and, you know, went down to San Diego City Hall and filed the paperwork and I bought the domain name. We didn't have knockaround.com then, it was knockaroundsunglasses.com. Uh, and I started the company. So. Here I was, I had, I had one art degree from the University of Virginia, and I had just moved to San Diego for an art program, and I was starting a business. But I was so naive about the whole thing, I didn't even know what I was getting into at the time. So it's, it's progressed over the years. <laughs> and it was really an icebreaker for you, you've shared before, when you would meet new friends at school, you'd say, hey, you want a pair of sunglasses? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's when you're in a new city, and you don't know anybody, and you're in a start new, a business. <laughs> start a business. 
because you can there's always like something to talk about because for me it was like I would, I would literally carry sunglasses in my pockets so that I, when I met somebody and said, "Oh, my name's you know my name's Adam. Nice to meet you. Here's a pair of sunglasses. I just started a sunglasses company, and you instantly have something to talk about." And that's how it worked for Knock Knock. And when you first started out, certainly you guys have a ton of press now. But what were you doing to raise awareness about Knock Around, especially when it was just you, one man operation? I mean, in the early days, when I started the company in 2005, I wasn't even worried about raising awareness. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just, I was trying to sell enough sunglasses so I could always have $20 in my pocket, right? So that I always, like, had a little bit of cash for lunch or, you know, you know beers with my buddies or something like that. Um, so at that point... I didn't even care, you know, about raising awareness. But what happened was I graduated from UCSD in 2008. I couldn't find a job. And uh, that's when I said, okay, I've got to kick things into high gear with, with uh, knock around. And so then you start leaning on everybody you know. You know, you look at your, your Facebook friends and you say, like, how can I gain, who can help me get some traction here? And, uh, for me, it was a friend, friend of a friend who worked at Daily Candy, the website and email list, um, and that was in 2000, late 2008 or 2009. Knock Around got its first big press mention. Daily Candy, and it wasn't big. I mean, it was like literally like a paragraph or a, a sentence, and that's that like that like lit the lit the fuse. And when you had that moment, and you realized. You know, hey, this is this is a real business. I really have something here. Did it change your mentality? It did. It made me realize that the part-time job that I had to pay the bills that I didn't like. I mean, I hated that job. Uh, it made me realize I didn't need it. You know, and it, it was more than anything a confidence booster. It wasn't enough money from that daily candy mentioned to sustain the business or even pay my rent that month but it was enough money to say like okay if I start really hustling and and really working all my angles on this business I don't have to have that shitty excuse me uh, part-time job anymore you know I, I can make this work and so it, for me it was just a confidence booster it was like all right I'm gonna make this happen it's not a, it's not a hobby anymore it's not a part-time thing. Now it's now it's my baby, and I'm gonna watch it grow. And when you say really hustle in the early days, can you give us a glimpse into the things that you were doing? Yeah, I think hustle is a word that sometimes gets overused, and it's not like I was. I could have I could have hustled a little bit harder back in those days, but um, when I say hustle, I mean like I was in my garage. And I was packing orders myself, and there was like no emails in my inbox. So you have to you have to just start doing things. And it's not about staying up all night, you know, and and you know, I don't know, camping out outside of like your your, uh, your the people that you look up to their their business place or something. It's about um, being strategic with it and just. Trying to use what you got to build momentum, and that's what I did. I mean, I, you picture me in 2008. I'm sitting in my garage. Uh, even in San Diego, it gets a little bit chilly in the winter, and um, so I'm all bundled up in sweatpants and a sweatshirt. And you know, I've got a couple orders, and I'm packing those orders. And I'm thinking, what can I do to get from two orders a day to the consistent daily candy number of orders, which was a hundred or something. And now that you are selling hundreds a day and you have a multi-million dollar brand, when you look back on the last decade, is there one moment that you just, you really smile about? You're so proud of it? I mean, there's definitely been milestones. That's a pretty good milestone. Anytime Matthew McConaughey's wearing your stuff, it's a milestone. That was a moment I'll never forget because my my one-year-old son 
uh, was born the day before we got these pictures that Matthew McConaughey was wearing the sunglasses. So I was holding my one day old son and I was like, you know, he's sleeping, I'm in the hospital. And I'm checking my email, and I get the email that Matthew McConaughey is wearing knock-around sunglasses, tossing a football with Brad Pitt in New Orleans. And uh, there's always the moments like that. You know, I, I, I think that the moments that kind of get lost are the ones like the first time we had a million dollars in sales in a year, um, you know, our 100,000th 100, order. Like those are the things that sort of they come and go and you don't, you don't even notice them, but moments like that were like, like you know, a guy that you, you look up to that like is is in like these movies that you watch. He's wearing your sunglasses. It's those are the moments I, I think about. But you know, there, there's a handful of them. Throwing out the first pitch at a, at a Padres game, um, that was that was a big moment. Um, even looking farther back, I mean, hiring our first employee. Besides me, that was a big moment. Uh, but there's, I think you could you could talk to a lot of small business owners, and there's not just that like, this was it, this was the big moment. It's it's like lots of little like, notches, you know. I'm glad you mentioned your first hire because I wanted to chat about that. When did you bring on the first person to join you? First person was hired in twenty. 2010. I uh, once I started having some success around 2008, 2009. I was still packing all the orders myself, and you know, you, what you want to do is you want to uh, sell as many sunglasses as you can. But that means more orders to pack. So I was working on the business during the day. I was packing orders at night because people wanted to get their orders shipped as soon as possible, and it was a lot of work. I mean, I was like. In 2009, I was I was working all day and I was packing orders till like one or two a.m., which was a good thing. You know, I, I wasn't going to complain about it because it meant that sales were good. Um, but that was that was the first hire. Was like I need somebody to come in and pack orders. And one of the things that about Knockaround that I'm most proud of is our first five employees um, are all still at Knockaround, including the first hire and. We all started out packing orders. So I think that says something about the company that the people that come in to just pack orders have now, we've got um, one person's the director of operations. Uh, our first employee is our production manager. We've got a warehouse manager. Um, one of our sales guys is, is one of the first five employees. So um, I needed help packing orders. I, I looked to a friend, and he's still here, and he's still a huge part of of knockdown, which is, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that. That feels good. I think it's certainly something to be proud of, and it's really every business owner's dream that you can bring in people who stay with you, who are committed, and who are really going to grow in their roles. That's all, and I, I know you're too humble to take credit, but a lot of that is on you as a founder and as a leader. When you bring people on, what are you doing to make them want to stay? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think it's all about the company culture, and that's something that a lot of companies I've found talk about company culture and talk about how Happy great. Happy hour and yeah, yeah. It's like and on Fridays at four thirty we have a kegerator and like you know we get to have beers and we do yoga and I I get it. You know, like that's probably that's better than not having beers on Friday or doing yoga on Monday at your company, but. Um, a lot of people talk talk about company culture, but at Knock Around, like that's it. I mean, that's that's what we do. And so, because of that, hiring new people is is extremely challenging. Um, I think that's why people stick around. We have a very 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 low turnover rate um, with employees, but it's also why I think we, we don't have more employees than we do because every new employee, it's like. There's some intense uh, scrutiny of is is this person going to fit in? You know? and I see these I see these small businesses, startups, um, new companies, and they, they they sort of jump from a 
few guys in a, in a garage or in an office, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they have 100 employees. And I just wonder how they can do it. Maybe, the, maybe what's tough is being in that middle ground, you know, when you have 10 to 20 employees, because it's really important that everyone gets along. Once you have 100 employees, like, maybe it's less important that everyone likes each other, but right now, Knockaround's at a place where we, we want everyone to really like each other, because you know, it's so much of our life that we spend at the office, uh, we better like each other, right? Otherwise, what are we doing here? I think that's so important, and I loved that in reading about Knockaround, everyone on your team is saying that it feels like a family. And I wanted to know, does it really feel like a family? Because, you know, there are certain things that my brother does and I'm going to jab him for doing that. Sometimes when you're so comfortable with someone, you forget to give feedback nicely. No, you're absolutely right. And that has been a challenge because what, what happens when, you, when you're so tight-knit and you're buddies, you know, and, you, and you even you, you're hanging out outside of work, um, you can lose that accountability about like what we're all here to do and grow, grow the business. So there is, there is a, a fine line, a gray area about um, we, we can't get, we, we have to all hold our own weight. No jabbing. Right, exactly. And uh, luckily I think we've done that. You know, it's like um, I think we can be friends, we can joke around, we can, we can poke fun at each other and we all know that at the end of the day, we have to get work done. So if you come to knock around, you know, if you came, if you came an hour ago, you would walk in, everyone would be at their computer, they'd be focused, they'd be working. It's not like we're just constantly shooting Nerf guns at each other. Mm -hmm. Although I have one on my <laughs> desk, loaded and ready to go, just in case. Just in case somebody walks in. Um, yeah, we're not constantly loading, or shooting Nerf guns, or you know, throwing footballs at each other, but. Um, there is that that element of fun, you know, all the time. And I think it also, when you think of it in terms of a family, you do spend a lot of your times at work, and not every day is a great day. You know, sometimes something might be happening at home, or you just might not be feeling well. And having the comfort of knowing that you have people around you who will step up when you need them, I think makes obviously a huge difference for your life, but your huge difference in your output at work. Yeah, no, you're right, and. One, one of the best realizations that I came to was there was a time as I was growing the business and I, I, we, were, we were just starting to get off the ground where I felt like I couldn't leave. Like I needed to be there every day to ensure that things were going to go smoothly. And at some point that switched. I could go on vacation with my family and not check in every day and have the confidence that the team here cared enough to take care of all the details and really, you know, make sure things ran smoothly, and cared about me enough to to give it their give it their best. You know, it wasn't just a job; it was like they knew that I was maybe I don't know. Scared's not the, not the right word, but like you know, apprehensive to leave for a week to go on vacation with my family. So they wanted to do their absolute best to make sure that nothing went wrong. You know, and and. Um, so there's that, there's that trust element there, and I think when you use the word family, I think about trust. You know, it's like even if you don't get along and you, you know, your brother's oh, elbow in your face, it's like you trust them, and you know that they're going to be there for you. And um, I, had that, I, had, I had a turning point with that, and it was probably 2012 maybe, and it was like, I've got a great team. I've got a great team in Nokia. You know, when it came to building the team too, so at what point did you guys reach like 10 team members, for example? It wasn't that long ago. And, and some of that is me being timid to add, add people to the company because we have such a good thing. Um, but probably about two years ago. So at that point, or whenever it was for your team, when did you kind of shift from that, you know, everyone sitting around the table, everything is getting done because I'm just right there and I can be like, hey, Adam, I forgot to do this. Can you help me? To, hey, we actually need processes because this is an organization. Yeah. Uh, it happened about a year ago and I realized everybody was doing a little bit of everything. So what was happening was 
let's say we get a shipment of sunglasses that arrives to our warehouse. The warehouse manager was telling a production manager, hey, we had a problem, the, the black moonshine premium sunglasses, uh, they, the color of the lenses is slightly off from what we're used to. So he would tell one person, and that person didn't necessarily know who to tell. There was no system in place for like, let's get this figured out. Um, and so there was a lot of looking around like, I didn't know about that. I never heard about that, you know? And so now we've injected these systems um, and job re responsibilities into the company so that it's very clear if something's off, you tell this person, they communicate it to these people. And that's, you know, that's not fun when you're, when you're a new entrepreneur and you're just starting a business. It's not like the, that's Let's not why I these started procedures. Like, Right, yeah. It's not why I started the, the sunglasses company was to like think about efficiency and, and business systems and especially as an art major, like I didn't know anything about it. But I realized if we want to keep continue to grow this company, um, we need to put put structure into the business. And that's what we did and it's worked extremely well. You know, now it's there's a lot more communication. People that need to be sharing information share that information, and um, yeah. So you're you're absolutely right. It went from like everybody does a little bit of everything and is injected on all parts of the business to this is your role. This is what you do, and that doesn't mean that there's not you know. Don't race. ever teach talk to the design team. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Like you know, our the guys in the warehouse are coming up with ideas for new sunglasses. Um, even if they're working in the warehouse, but there is structure in the business. And then how did you prepare your team to accept that structure? I had a, a great conversation with Jeff Wald over at Work Market where he said, you know, you have phase one, which is what we were just talking about. Everyone's doing everything. Phase mm -hmm. two, you implement these processes and everyone's still so close. They're like, I don't care you implemented that process. I'm going to do it the way I want. How did you help them make that shift? Yeah, everyone needs to buy into the system. And it wasn't just something that happened organically. It was, it was like us talking about it. It was sitting down and saying, look, here's where we are with the company. We need this structure. Here's why. And let's make it happen. And it, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, it's a, it's a process to work at it, to, to, to make it work. Um, but eventually everyone bought into it. When you step back and you reflect on the time that you've had a team and the time that it's been 10 and now 16 and you're growing, is there one leadership lesson that just really sticks out to you? Or something you've learned about leading a team? Yeah, I think, um, I think that the, maybe I'm talking about this because it's been so clear to me in this past year but hiring is crucial. And you need, um, I, I know I've talked a lot about the company culture and, and making sure people are the right fit, um, but even if somebody on their resume checks all the boxes and seems like they're gonna be a good fit, you need to, you need to talk to your employees. You need to see how they feel, see if there were any red flags in their conversations with that employee. Um, and and that's leadership. It's saying, I'm not going to just be the sole guy making the decisions and saying, you know, here's a new employee, deal with them. It's, it's taking the feedback and it's learning from what your employees say. And uh, it's not always what you want to hear. You know, like, I'll, come, I'll come up with decisions and people will push back. And I'm glad they do, but it kind of it sucks, you know, because... I want to just make the decision and move on, but you have to listen to the people that you trust and that you care about that work at, at the company. Uh, and so, it, I hope it's not too cliche, but the bigger, biggest leadership lesson I've learned is listen to the people at the company that you trust. Listen to their feedback. If they're saying somebody's not fitting in, don't, don't turn a blind ear to that. Um, you know, take action and, and listen to them. And when someone says you know they're not fitting in or in the beginning of the hiring process you're trying to think you know okay is this the right fit we all talk about that adam but what 
how do you know what's the right fit? You don't. And that's the scariest part. <laughs> bad answer. Bad answer. You never, do, you never know. And it's so tough. I mean, you, you think about it. Like, so if you're hiring a new person, we're, we're doing a hiring right now for a new digital marketing manager. And you post the job and you post the job responsibilities and you have an influx of applicants and uh, you see some people that you like, you know, that you think might be a good fit. You have a phone interview, maybe you have a couple in-person interviews, you introduce them to the people in the office, the rest of the team, but then at some point you have to make a decision. You just have to decide. And it's like, it's like deciding to get married after a few dates, you know, like you, you have a, f a nice phone call, you go on a couple dates, you introduce them to your, to your parents, and then you deal with them every single day. And it's, so it's scary. Now, it's easier to fire someone than it is to <laughs> get a divorce, I guess. True. But even so, I mean, like, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough. Speaking of lessons, too, one of my favorite insights from Fred Wilson is that there's some lessons that we just have to learn the really, really hard way, but they end up being instrumental as we move forward, you know, whether it's personally or professionally. What's been a hard lesson that you've had to learn that has just made you a better person? I feel like I say that a lot, lesson learned. You know, I feel like I type that Me out. Me too. I really don't like it. <laughs> lesson learned. You know, now, now I know. I say things like that. Now we know. Um, one, of the, one of the things I've learned uh, is that working with outside agencies, consultants, advisors, um, I'm, I, I'm not saying it can't always work, or can't ever work, I should say, um, but I'm skeptical now, now that I've done it with a few outside agencies and firms. I think there's a lot you're taking on when you take on a new employee, when you hire somebody, but um, there's something to be said for having somebody in your office that buys into the company goals, the company mission, uh, that you can just walk over to their desk, you know, read their body language, talk to them about a project you're working on, and it's quick and it's easy, and it's not an email, and it's not a phone call, and, um, and so one of the things I've learned is like, if there's if there's a, a a list of of things requirements that you need for the business, it's probably better to hire somebody that's going to be a great fit for those things than to go outside of the company hire a firm to sort of throw some resources at at that. That's fantastic. I've never heard someone say that. It's a really good point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I have, you know, a list of things that I want to talk to you about, but I got so caught up in the culture because you were sharing such valuable information for founders and for me to hear. And I know you have an interview with someone at three, so I'm going to let you go. But before you go, we always just do three questions that don't have to do with work, but I'm going to tie them a little bit into knock around because I'm curious. Okay. Question one. If you could design your ultimate pair of sunglasses right now with everything you're interested in, like in this moment, what would you design? The ultimate pair of sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a good question because one of the things, if you go to knockaround.com and you check out our product selection, it's colorful. That's that's always been a big part of the business. Like I want tons of selection. We have a custom shop where you can design your own sunglasses. But when it comes down to it, the sunglasses that I actually wear are very very subdued, you know, they're like the tortoise shells and the navy blues and the grays. Um, so the, the pair of sunglasses that I've been wearing recently, and I would say they're, they're my favorite pair of knockarounds that I've had, they're navy blue, they've got amber lenses, amber, that's the brown lenses, and they tint everything to make, make it, you know, make trees look greener, make the ocean look bluer, and, uh, but the little logos on the side are gold. I like it. They're, they're subtle, but they got the gold K logos on the side. So Yeah, you just got like a little something going on. A little bit of bling. All right, question two. If you could teleport anywhere right now, where would you teleport? I think this is a good thing because I was like instantly I was I'm running through places in my head. You know, like I'm from Virginia on the East Coast. Maybe I should go to Virginia. Are you a Redskins uh, fan? 
Uh, no, I'm a Chargers fan. Okay. I used to be a Redskins fan, but I adopted the Chargers. Good idea. <laughs> um, I think they should change the name, too, by the way, the Redskins. But, no, no, so, like, when you asked that question, I didn't know you were going to ask it, and I started thinking about all the places I like, but I hope it doesn't sound too cliche. I want to be in San Diego. I want to be here. I mean, I mean that. I really do. Obviously, you have the weather in San Diego. Um, it's a great city. It's an awesome city. There's something about home, for sure. There's something about home. I, I hope that's not too boring of an answer. But San Diego, like there's probably, you ask people that are in New York City where they want to go, they probably say San Diego. We're already here. We're already here, yeah. This is it. Last one. Me and what's, what's one question that you've always wanted to be asked, but nobody's ever asked you? Personal, professional, athletic achievement from when you were seven? Um, oh man okay I think I know what it is I think the question I w- I would want to be asked that in it, I've done a few uh, interviews similar to this you know like this has been the best thank you but, but, but similar where the people are asking about knock around now and the accomplishments and the celebrities and the you know like the, what we're up to now but a lot a lot of People don't think about the future, you know, and, and for me, it's not necessarily all knock around. Like, I'm committed to knock around. I'm going to continue to grow the business, but I want people to be curious about what I'm going to do next, you know? It's like, what's the next business going to be? Now, what stinks about that is I don't really have a clear cut answer of what the next business is going to be, but though, I mean, that's what I'm thinking about, you know? It's not. It's not just about knock around. It's not a family business. I'm not going to be running knock around for the next 30 years and then hand it off to my to my sons. Um, I want people to ask, like, what are your other ideas? Like, what do you want to do? Do you have any that you're working through now? I can't tell you. They're, they're super <laughs> stealth. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If you're an entrepreneur and you and you have that in your blood. You you're see problems seeing, and you want to solve them. You see problems or you see, like... Um, just, you just have ideas, and uh, and that that that's what's fun for me to talk about. It's just new ideas because Knockaround is in a great place. The business is growing. We've got great products. We've got a great brand that we've built, and we're going to continue to do that. But like a guy like Elon Musk, you know, it's like he's not going to just generally thinking ahead, <laughs> right? Exactly, and he's got. And I just watched a great documentary about the guy who started Five Hour Energy. I can't remember his name. Um, it's on YouTube. It's free, so you should you should check it out. But he started Five Hour Energy. That's what he's known for. But he's working on all these projects, you know, really really interesting projects um, to to solve problems and to probably to make money, but to do new things. And um, I'm there. I'm I'm ready to talk about about new new projects, new companies, new businesses, and new ideas. And, and that's what, I don't get asked about that a lot, you know? So I'm not going to ask about a super stealth mode idea, but if you could just, you know, if there's one thing you're interested in right now or a startup or idea that you would want to be a part of, what would it be, like industry-wise? Yeah. Um, the, the, the companies that I look at that I love, Chubby's. Do you know Chubby Shorts? My brother's an ambassador, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, I we made sunglasses for Chubby, so I know some of those guys, and and I have my uh, I have my bald eagle slippers that I got on Cyber Monday as part of their promo on Cyber Monday right over here. Um, they're doing a great job with their branding and their marketing, and I think you're always looking at other companies, even if they're not direct competitors, like other sunglasses companies. You're looking at what they do and their creativity and and um, I'm inspired by Chubby's, and um, there's a company called Huckberry that I love, and their writing is so good, and I always check their emails. So there's not one idea. I just know that whatever the next business is, it's going to be different than sunglasses, and it's going to be um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to get people fired up the way that I get fired up when I talk about Chubby's and Huckberry. For me, it all starts with the name, um, and you got to be able to get the domain name. And you've got to get all the social media handles, and uh, there's so much in a name. 
at least for me, for future businesses, it's it's got to I got to feel great about the name, and I can't just go to some website and like start making up fake names, you know, that that don't have any meaning to them. Um, so that's where I'm at. I mean, I'm I'm brainstorming new ideas, new companies. I've got a few that are like uh, at the top of the list, um, but I'm excited. I'm excited for the next ten years. I mean, it's, there's, there's more ideas and more businesses in sight, definitely. Well, I'm excited to stay up to date with that. But for everyone right now who wants to stay up to date with Knockaround, what's the best way they can do that? Knockaround.com. On Instagram, follow us uh, at Knockaround. On Facebook, facebook.com slash Knockaround. And uh, yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Ace Knockaround. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I had a great time with you today. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good, good conversation.